Hello everybody how are you hope you are all in good health today myself piraj mojumdar again welcome you to make pro classes uh, to our new subject that is the mechanical sciences it comes under the you know third semester uh, it is a very important subject it is the main core subject of mechanical engineering you can say also and today we will be starting with the most important and most popular topic that is the metal casting so before i start in metal casting you must know uh, the background of a manufacturing process you know manufacturing process is one of the most important and hot topic you can say in mechanical engineering uh, stream or discipline you can say now uh, manufacturing uh, involves you know you must have heard the word in our daily uh, life you know manufacturing manufacturing is very popular and famous term you can say manufacturing is nothing but you know uh, you can say turning raw materials raw materials can be uh, you know iron or aluminium okay or bronze what were maybe the raw material you have to convert this raw material into some finished product finished products by some uh, useful techniques or methods you can say okay for some purpose okay so turning of raw materials into finished product or desirable products you can say to use some, for some purposes is known as you know manufacturing okay now uh, in the present age there have been increasing demands on the product performance by way of desirable exotic properties such as resistance to high temperature they are the most hot topic nowadays resistance to you know high temperature so we have to you know manufacture or uh, make a product component and that should be highly resistance to you know high temperature as well and you can say also another point high operating speeds these are the hot you know parameters or topics or demands from the uh, customer ends you can say the resistance to high temperature high operating speeds okay uh, and extra loads you can say extra loads so we have to design or you know uh, make a component and that particular component having the following properties as well okay so these are the main you know uh, topics of parameters you can say are going uh, in very famous or in demand nowadays that is the resistance to high temperature high operating speeds extra loads etc okay so you know we are uh, reading this you know manufacturing process by the by learning the manufacturing process one can easily choose uh, you know there are different manufacturing process i will come to the metal casting where from this you know the metal casting derived and the background as well as the history uh, different processes as well as the equipments also so first you will have to know uh, the different manufacturing processes what is the need of the manufacturing process that that's what i am telling right now okay so uh, you can say uh, uh, economics of the manufacturing operation is a very important consideration we have to uh, keep in mind the economics as well the cost involved okay so there is you know already there is a competitive you know market going on and so you have to make a product with quality as well as with economy that is you have to produce a, a component according to the desire of the uh, customer or the demand you can say as well as you have to check the uh, economy you have to minimize the cost as well okay now manufacturing process is a very fundamental subject since it is of interest not only to mechanical engineers this is, you can say uh, mechanical sciences are mainly for mechanical engineers but nowadays you can say uh, man manufacturing is, uh, processes is not only to mechanical mechanical engineers but also to those uh, from practically every discipline of engineering you can say okay 
and uh, it is also because engineering as a whole is meant for providing various materials for human consumption okay human consumption so that is what manufacturing is as well okay for various products uh, you can say such as uh, plant machinery required for chemical civil electrical electronic textile etc the manufacturing process is a vital you can say the process okay so you know a detailed understanding of the manufacturing processes is thus essential for every engineers you can say okay this helps them appreciate the qualities uh, capabilities advantages as well as the limitations of the various manufacturing process okay so this will help you in proper design of any product required by them as well okay look uh there are a large number of you know uh, processes available for manufacturing to engineers and i can write the mainly common processes are you know casting uh next is your forming i can say uh, next is your fabrication welding soldering brazing comes under this fabrication and the last one is you can say material removal okay material removal process okay where you have turning process in lathe uh, shaping machine planer uh, planing machine uh, drilling machine grinding machine as well look uh, in the first part um, generally mechanical sciences previously in the old subject uh, syllabus sorry old syllabus there was map primary manufacturing process and secondary manufacturing process in the primary manufacturing process we are going to learn the different processes used to you know convert raw material okay that is uh, that should be fitted for you know secondary manufacturing process that is material removal so uh, the manufacturing processes in the previous uh, you know old subject uh, syllabus was broadly classified into two parts first part was the primary manufacturing and the second part was the secondary or you can say uh, metal cutting they used to say as metal cutting okay in the primary one you used to learn the basic uh, metal forming processes you can say like the casting and uh, then forming okay then fabrication or welding you can say okay so this basic processes we are going to learn in the uh, we used to learn in the primary uh, manufacturing process and then in the second part we used to learn the different machining operations or metal cutting you can say as well but now uh, in mechan in a new syllabus of macout they have got mechanical sciences in the mechanical sciences only they are uh, giving you the scope to learn the primary and secondary processes in a uh, single uh, you know um, semester previously it was uh, divided into two semester so we will be learning the primary as well as the secondary that is the uh, casting forming or fabrication processes as well as the metal cutting processes in a single semester as well okay now just to tell you one thing why uh, that was primary and uh, that was the secondary uh, the term they used uh, because primary means whenever you are receiving you know uh, raw material okay say this is a raw material so raw material means say for iron we are getting hematite okay say we are getting hematite or magnetite as well okay they are the ores of they are the you can say iron ores okay so when you are uh, look we we are getting this uh, you know raw materials in the form of ore only okay so this is this cannot be a symmetrical one okay the shape of the ore cannot be a may or may not be a symmetrical one okay look that is the raw material you can say when we are getting a particular uh, you know metal that is iron or you can say copper okay so we are getting in the form of ore that is the metal in impure form you can say impure impure form 
that is having some slag okay so we are obtaining this impure form of metal from mines you can say iron mines or copper mines okay now we have to convert or process this particular ore to some useful iron you can say okay first you have to melt this in the blast furnace okay where we will be getting pig iron okay in the blast furnace then after you know uh, changing or varying the carbon percentage you can have uh, accordingly as malleable custard or white custard or steel as well when the carbon percentage uh, carbon percentage is you know less than 2% less than 2% then it is known as steel and when the carbon percentage is greater than 2% it is known as cast iron okay that is the basic thing you must know every engineers in mechanical engineers must have the idea of steel and the cast iron that is when the carbon is greater less than 2% that is the steel and when it is greater than 2% it is known as cast iron okay now coming to this you know uh, manufacturing process uh, so we will be having this you know random shaped or uh, unsymmetrical shape iron ore or you can say ore of any metal so you can say copper or zinc or aluminium you can say we are getting in this form that is the impure form next we have to melt this in blast furnace okay we are getting the different cast irons or steel as well okay now coming to this you know uh, manufacturing process the concept of casting comes when comes you know uh, at the time when we have to cast that particular you know uh, particular metal in its molten form to a particular molding cavity and we are receiving a desired product that's where the casting is you know applicable similarly forming is also a primary manufacturing process as well as fabrication also now you can wonder why this process are known as primary manufacturing process not secondary manufacturing process in secondary manufacturing process we are having material removal process that is the metal cuttings that is the lathe we are using grinding or you know shaping or you know milling so there are different and there are many material removal process as well so they are known as the secondary and they are known as the primary primary as because when you are receiving a particular raw material from a mine you cannot just simply use this material removal process you have to make this particular ore in some desirable form or you have to convert that particular you know uh, uh, ore into some useful product that is useful product means i mean to say that you have to remove the slag as because this slag will make your product defective one okay so first you have to extract the metal out of it from the impure form that is with the slag you have to eliminate the slag you have to extract the metal out of it from the ore that is the raw material then and the process you know and the process of extracting uh, you know the pure metal pure metal from this you know impure form that is removing the slags and impurities you can also say slags or impurities i can write it for you slag or impurities as well okay whatever you can uh, say okay so the process of removal of slag or impurities and converting this ore to a useful you know or uh, useful metal you can say or pure metal you can also say okay that processes that processes you have to carry out before you know applying material removal process so, so that processes are known as the primary manufacturing process where you can have the casting forming as well okay 
so first you have to apply primary manufacturing process to a raw material to convert it into a pure metal you can say okay then only you will be allowed to apply material removal processes so that's why these are these processes are known as primary manufacturing process as because you have to apply first that process to convert this, this raw material or ore to a useful or pure metal as well then only you will be eligible to apply this material removal processes okay now this metal casting let us come to the metal casting uh, first i will tell you the basic you know uh, definitive part of the metal casting or you can say the introductory part of basic introductory part of metal casting then we will know the background or the use or the you know um, appearance of the metal casting process in uh, uh, this is very important you know uh, knowing the history behind the metal casting as because this is a very popular uh, process in manufacturing and being widely used since ages this is a very common process okay uh, so we will learn metal casting process in you know um, detail okay I will take uh, two or three classes. Please stick to me with this video. You will learn a lot about metal casting, which is very useful for your semester examinations as well as for your highly, uh, you know, competitive examinations and gate examinations as well. Okay. So, the basic definition of uh, metal casting you can say uh, in, you know, metal casting, uh, you already have somewhere you have heard the casting. You know, the casting is a very popular term. In casting only, liquid metal is used this is the only uh, manufacturing process you can say where we are using uh, liquid metal okay liquid metal you can say and uh, casting uh, you know is uh, also one of the oldest known manufacturing process this is oldest manufacturing process you can say oldest one oldest manufacturing process you can say now uh, in a single uh, sentence i can say uh, it requires this metal casting requires a uh, uh, preparation of a cavity we will learn in a detailed manner just uh, first i will just tell the basic things and then we will learn in a detailed manner what are these cavities what are the different uh, you know equipments we are going to use in metal casting what is sprue what is runner what is riser what is gate as well then we will have a uh, you know video of a recorded video of, of our college where we have done metal casting of aluminium okay so stick to me with this video till the end we will learn a lot okay now uh, coming to this metal casting i can say it requires a preparation you can say preparation preparation of a cavity that is a molding cavity you can say usually in a refractory material refractory you know refractory is is a property refractoriness okay so refractoriness is a property r e f r s c t o r y refractory so refractoriness is a property uh, by which a particular material can hold itself in high temperature that is it doesn't allow to melt itself okay so it can withstand high temperature i can write it uh, to withstand withstand high temperature you can say high temperature okay that is a property of a good you know refractory material so in generally metal casting we are using sand you know sand is hard to melt you know you cannot melt melt sand easily by applying a temperature okay so at high temperature sand remains intact it doesn't melt so easily so that is a refractory material we are going to use in uh, metal casting now uh, so the definition i was telling so metal casting involves a uh, preparation or uh, preparation of cavity that is known as mold cavity usually in a uh, refractory material to resemble closely the final object okay the final object to be casted or to be obtained you can say okay that is the final object okay now molten metal say we have the cavity now the molten metal is to be poured okay now this molten metal say this is the molten metal you have to pour this is a mold cavity and this is a you know you have to pour the molten metal molten metal is poured into this refractory mold cavity and is allowed to solidify okay the object after solidification 
okay this one say this is the object the object after solidification is removed from the mold it is a removed from the mold say this one is removed from the mold and is you know um, this you know uh, final product you can say this is the final product now casting processes are universally used for manufacturing of a wide variety of products you can say okay the principal process among these is the sand casting you can say sand casting is a principal process where sand is used as well as uh, you already know as refractory material and the process uh, is equally suitable for the production of very small batch you can say small batch or you can say large batch or large scale you can say as well large scale okay so basic definition part of metal casting you can say it is a process of preparing a cavity that is known as mold cavity and the you know in a refractory material that is a sand okay to resemble closely the final object to be made okay the final object okay takes the shapes of the desired product you want to make that is a, this one say the desired product and for making this final object or you know the casting we re, we require one more thing that is a pattern pattern is a principal tool used for metal casting so we we'll also learn what is pattern pattern is a very important term related to casting without pattern you cannot cast simply a metal okay so we must know what is the pattern what are the different types of pattern what are the function of pattern okay so it is very important to know pattern as well without pattern you cannot you know simply uh, uh, do casting so we must learn the pattern as well so metal casting you know is a vast subject we have to stick around and we have to learn many things from metal casting as well now some of the uh, casting processes i must tell you uh, before going directly to the you know uh, in depth to the metal casting so there are some most common metal casting processes are there as well that is a cell mold we will learn this in uh, you know in detail in our next classes next is our pre precision investment casting as well then we have some plaster mold plaster mold then we have permanent mold as well and this one is very important and famous also die casting you must have had uh, this die casting in your workshops or colleges this is very important and famous as well this die casting process then we have centrifugal this is also very famous you know centrifugal casting there you know these different casting processes are very a special one and they are used for special purposes as well okay so and these are the different casting process now let us learn uh, the background of the casting now coming to the history of casting you already know the casting process uh, is a very you know earliest you can say metal shaping process known to human beings it is also known as you can say metal shaping as well so it was the it was you can say earliest one of the earliest process known to human beings it generally means you know pouring molten metal as i already said into a refractory mold with a cavity of the shape to be made and allowing it to solidify okay that is the main thing you must keep in mind you have to solidify it will generally solidifies actually in normal room temperature now now you can see uh, when solidified the desired metal object is taken out of the refractory material uh, mold either by breaking the mold or taking the mold apart okay the solidified object the solidified you must take a note the solidified object is called as casting okay casting and the process is known as founding the process is uh, known as founding or you can say foundry you know foundry shop they are very famous shops in man, many of the you know workshops 
mechanical workshops or whatever there is uh, manufacturing workshops you can say foundry shop is you know you can find this in your vt whenever you go to vt vt means uh, vocational training if you go to railway workshops or many different workshops are there you must find this foundry shop foundry shop is very famous as because pattern making casting processes are going on this in this you know uh, foundry shop as well okay so this process is known as founding this is known as founding and the solidified object is called as casting now coming to the history look the casting process uh, was probably discovered around you know uh, 3500 this axis they are very famous for cutting woods as well as for uh, defense purposes also this copper axis and other flat objects flat objects okay flat objects you can say so copper axis as well as flat objects were made in open molds made of stone or baked clay that is very important uh, baked clay is very important clay you already know clay clay is very famous in you know casting so um, uh, copper axis and other flat objects were made in open molds made of stone or you know baked clay okay these molds were essentially in single piece but in later periods what happened when round objects so when round objects as a wheel you can say when round objects were required to be made the mold was split split mold we will learn about the different types of molds that is the here when they are using the uh, making of you know round materials uh, they were using the split mold okay to facilitate the withdrawal of round object okay this one okay. now uh, next to the bronze age around 2000 bc this is the bronze age you can say around 2000 bc um, bought for more refinement into this uh, casting process for the first time perhaps the core for uh, making hollow you know the hollow and say this is the you know core say this is the core this is the you know molding this is the core we will learn core uh, in the latter part in details okay for just now you just know the core core is used for making you know hollow hollow material and the core is used okay so this core is used for making hollow you know this hollow that is a core this is a solid one and if you want to make a hollow you know cylinder type okay so you have to use this core only okay now in the you know uh, bronze age uh, the those cores were you know uh, invented and those cores you know these cores were made up of baked clay also, also. now this casting process is also known as lost wax you must take a note this lost wax is a very common term we are going to use it in metal casting that metal casting previously was lost, known as lost wax process which was extensively used in making ornaments and fine wax ornaments that is jewelry you can say or uh, fine work okay that is you can say the you know uh, designing designing purposes okay so we can say that metal casting was also famous for its name as uh, I already mentioned as Lost Wax Method or you can also know the name as Sire Pardiu or you can say Lost Wax Process as well okay now this was very famous you know during the earlier ages and it was probably discovered around you know 3500 bc in mesopotamia and at that you know ancient ages it was famous for making ornaments and uh, fine work as well okay and coming to the um, indian uh, you know history of metal casting i can say uh, during the invasion of you know alexander the great you already heard the name alexander the great in history uh, during the invasion of you know uh, 300 bc 
that was the time you know when um, it appears that uh, iron casting technology in india has become in use okay now the famous iron pillar you already heard the name of kutub minar kutub minar in delhi a very you know historical monument and popular one also this kutub minar in delhi is an example of you know metallurgical skills of ancient indians it was you know 7.2 meter long okay and it was made up of pure malleable iron you already know what are the different uh, forms of iron you already have studied in the engineering materials as well uh, the white cast iron malleable cast iron or uh, there are very different you know uh, high carbon steel as well there are different forms of you know pig iron you have already know so this kutub minar uh, was of you know pure malleable iron okay so this is all you know about the history of metal casting let us learn some advantages and limitations of this particular casting now as you know i already mentioned that metal casting is a very popular and famous and widely used in different you know industry mainly popular in manufacturing industries and it has got you know various advantages as well okay look the casting process um, you already know where molten molten material flows into any small section in the mold cavity and uh, as such uh, any intricate shape the first advantage i can write it for you any intricate shape you know intricate you know intricate means complex you can say okay so any intricate shape you can say can be uh, make or made from a metal casting process okay so it, this also you can write as it can be a internal or external one okay so the first advantage is for any intricate that is any complex shape as well uh, can be made that is as well internal and external as well can be made by this metal casting process okay now um, you know it is possible to cast practically any material okay it can be you know ferrous i can write it is ferrous or you can say non ferrous as well you know what is ferrous and non ferrous ferrous which contains iron and the non ferrous which doesn't contain iron aluminum zinc copper you can say as non ferrous items okay now uh, the next advantage i can tell you as the uh, uh, the tools we are using during metal casting process are you know very simple very simple tool and it is also inexpensive you can say that is cheaper so the cost is a you know very important factor as a engineer you have to always keep in mind the economy of this particular process as well so coming to the advantages you can say that tools you can say that tools we are using during metal casting process is very simple and cheaper one okay so as a result uh, for trial production or production of a small lot small lot means small batches batches you can also say okay so for this production of small batches it is an ideal method this metal casting process okay and also one most important thing i must tell you uh, it is uh, you know uh, in the casting process it is possible to place the amount of material you can write it amount of material uh, amount of material where it is exactly required okay exactly required we can place the amount of material where it is exactly required as well okay now as a result what happens for this particular advantage the weight reduction you can write it as weight reduction in design you can say okay so weight reduction in design that is we are making a quality product but in a you know lighter way that is the product we finally obtained is much lighter that is a weight reduction that is i mean to say we are getting weight reduction in design okay now uh, castings are generally you know uh, can be uh, cooled uniformly from all sides and uh, thereby they are expected to have no directional you know 
um, properties so you can write it as as this uh, casting process you can write it another advantage this casting process can be cooled from any direction so there are no you can say or minimum directional properties as well okay directional properties you can write okay. now uh, again one more thing i would like to share with you that is the uh, there are certain metals and alloys as well uh, which can only be casted by casting only okay and not by any other process like forging uh, because of the metallurgical considerations as well okay and the uh, another one i can say casting of any size you can write casting of any size and weight as well weight okay weight as well even up to you know heavier weight say up to 200 tons as well can easily be made by metal casting process or sand casting you can say okay so these are the advantages main advantages of a casting process now as you know every process has got its advantages as well as its limitations so now we learn some limitations as because as a engineer in a manufacturing while working in a manufacturing environment or manufacturing industries as well you have to learn the limitations as well beside advantages of a particular of any you know process manufacturing process you can say okay so let us learn the limitations look uh, this metal casting while you will be doing in hand during uh, in your workshop uh, this metal casting process you will get to know uh, the dimensional accuracy first i will say the dimensional accuracy you know the dimension the height uh, length breadth as well so this is the dimensional accuracy that is the accuracy or you can say the how accurate we can make a product that is the dimensional accuracy you can say and as well the surface finish surface finish you know these two terms are very important and you are going to you know face these terms in every sphere of your life in your during your production um, and manufacturing industries as well okay so this two term uh, very important you must keep in mind this dimensional accuracy and surface finish this is the quality you can say also okay the surface finish uh, this this particular term the surface finish uh, is actually very important for attracting customers okay so you have to keep in mind the accuracy by how how much accurate how, how much accurate the product is which you are making or you are getting as a final product so this is very important and in metal casting these two terms you can say uh, limitations okay how look this dimensional accuracy and surface finished achieved by the you know normal sand casting as we are using this sand casting we are calling this as sand casting as because it is extensively used in uh, many of the you know manufacturing industry to manufacture different uh, finished products as well okay. the, just i already discussed with you in the applications portion that are the pistons uh, the cylinders liners okay so there are many things uh, we are going to cast you know uh, using sand casting that is the most extensively used casting method that is the sand casting process so this dimensional accuracy and surface finish we are you know this is the limitations of you know surface finish uh, sand casting process okay and the two, that will be not adequate for final applications okay so we are not getting as much as required the dimensional accuracy as well as surface finish. so that is that is the limitations okay first limitation now coming to the next limitation i can say uh, in order to you know uh, eliminate this particular you know deficiency in dimensional accuracy as well as surface finish special uh, some special casting processes like uh, die casting we will learn in next classes uh, these are the special casting process the die casting process permanent mold casting process there are many process okay mm, special casting process you can say so this particular this die casting process uh, has been developed um, for this you know eliminate this uh, limitations of di dimensional accuracy and as well as uh, surface finish also okay now this hand casting process is also labor uh, intensive you can say okay 
labor intensive oh it, you can say the labor intensive uh, also okay to some extent you can say also okay so many improvements are you know aimed uh, at it such as machine molding you can say we are using machine molding and uh, foundry mechanization also there are the different ways of automation you can say as well for uh, eliminating the labor intensive process of sand casting okay so now one more limitation i must tell you that uh, with some materials you know uh, there are some specific materials as well uh, it is often difficult to rem uh, remove defects you know this metal casting process has got a separate chapter we will be reading in the next classes on casting defects we are having a separate chapter on casting defects so with some materials you know they, they, uh, it is very often uh, you know difficult to remove this you know casting defects okay and these are mainly due to the presence of moisture as well so we must take a note these are all you know the limitations of uh, there are many other limitations as well but they are they are the main limitations that we are going to face during uh, sand casting process as well okay so these are the advantages as well as the limitations portion of the metal casting now we will come to the uh, basic terms that is uh, we have to face during metal casting process so we have to learn the basic terms relating to the metal casting process so we can write the heading as a casting you know casting terms you can say okay so there are basic terminology that are extensively used during casting process as well so we have to learn the uh, different terms we are going to use in uh, during casting process as well okay so they are very important as well and for learning that we have to you know uh, we have to refer to a diagram i will try to make a diagram for you a 3d diagram as you already know i am not a much of a you know artist but i will try to make simple diagram which will help you uh, you know to understand the different terms relating to the casting process as well okay so let me try it for you so let me draw it for you uh, the molding box as well and it's different uh, tool as well or you can say the chambers and the different uh, sectors so i'm trying to uh, you know, I have a diagram for casting process we are generally using in our workshop and in industry we are also using. So, let us draw first, then I will explain the different terms involving, you know, uh, the casting process as well. Okay. So, so basically, this is you can say look this picture is not so uh, you know uh, up to the mark uh, sorry for my bad drawing you know but you can find this picture in many of the books manufacturing books as well and i also consulted the pn rao you can also consult pn rao or any other books there are many books available for manufacturing um, and you can also find this picture in it also but let us find the different casting terms uh, related uh, with this metal casting or sand casting as well you can say okay so first of all i will say uh, let us have a ladle over here i forget to mention a ladle a ladle is simple you, you know this is a container you can say where uh, the molten metal will be you know poured in the uh, you know this pouring basin then it will come to the sprue as well okay so this uh, you can say a beaker type of where we can uh, uh, transport the molten metal from the you know cupola you can say um, where we are uh, melting the um, metal as well in the furnace and we are just taking the molten metal from this you know uh, with this help with the help of this ladle in the you know cupola you can say okay so we are using this ladle to pick up the you know uh, take the molten metal out of the cupola from the furnace and we are transferring this uh, molten metal from the uh, furnace to the you know 
molding box as well and we are pouring this into the pouring basin then it will come to the sprue as well okay so uh, let us first know the basic terms then i will uh, simply explain the different terms uh, related to the uh, this picture as well you can see or the different terms using in the sand casting as well okay so first term i will write it for you uh, it is flux you can say or molding flux you can also say as well okay so let me write as flux only this flux or molding flux as well you can say is one which holds the you know uh, sand mold intact so i can write which holds the sand mold intact okay now this you know the sands the sands are say these are the sands over here okay these are the sands over here. so let me show you these are the sands okay now uh, so the flux now depending upon the you know uh, position of the flux in the mold structure this mold structure it is referred to uh, various name you can say as the first name you can say the drag okay and let me write the cope first cope uh, drag cheek also there is one also term that is cheek okay this scope and drag might be very popular and might be known to you but this cheek is a special name for special uh, casting purpose you can know this cheek is uh i'll discuss later first let me discuss what is scope and drag as well the say look uh, this is the you know you can say the total molding you know uh, system or uh, structure you can say now we are having a sand to the different two different parts the upper portion we generally termed it as a cope okay and the lower portion we are uh, calling it as a drag also okay now the parting line you can say this one as the parting line as well where you know it divides the cope and drag okay the upper portion and the lower portion as well okay so the upper portion you can say this as the you know the uh, cope and the lower portion you can say this is the drag as well okay now you can uh, also okay let me first complete with this flux one then i will discuss the cheek also okay now uh, this flux uh, you already know it holds a sand mold intact and it is also known by different name as scope drag and uh, cheek as well now uh, it is sometimes made up of material is uh, wood i can say wood for you know temporary purpose for temporary purpose we are uh, using wooden flux and for uh, permanent you can also use metal okay so this is all about flux you can see now uh, let us uh, you already know what is scope and drag let me write it also you can take a note so these are the basic terms so i must write the cope uh, you also know cope what is and what is drag as well now what is cheek this is a new term for you i think so the cheek is uh, you can say intermediate you know intermediate that is the middle portion you can also say intermediate uh, molding flux you can say okay so molding flux intermediate molding flux in a three piece you know three piece molding okay now look uh, the figure i have drawn here is two piece so if you are having three piece say the you are having a three piece the middle portion the middle portion say we are having this one okay another one another one portion over here okay so that will be the first one will be the the top, topmost part you can say is the you can say uh, termed as a cope and the middle portion now will be termed as you know cheek there is a special case okay so this is a special case cheek and the last one or the bottommost portion you can term it as a drag as well okay so i think you have now have the concept of cheek as well okay? so cheek is the intermediate or the middle portion of a molding flux in a three piece you must keep in mind it is used only three piece molding in case of three piece molding only okay and in case of two piece molding we are calling it as the upper portion as or the topmost portion as a cope and the lowermost portion as the drag only okay now the next very important term is pattern okay now i already mentioned about the pattern earlier that pattern is the principal tool you must write somewhere or you must remember it is the principal tool i can write it for you as well so i can write it is the principal tool used in used during casting process okay 
so um, process okay now so you can say this pattern without pattern one cannot do casting as well okay we will be having you know uh, um, separate class on pattern you must have a very solid knowledge on pattern what is pattern what are the different types of pattern what are the applications different applications of pattern how it is used during metal casting as well okay so um, you must have a clear idea of pattern so we will be having a different uh, um, class on pattern where we learn uh, detail in pattern okay for now in uh, just know uh, you can say uh, pattern you can write it as a definition portion you can write for definition it is a you can say it is a replica it is a replica you can say replica you know replica means you know model you can say model okay so this is a replica or model uh, of the final object or the desired object you can also say or the uh, of the final object okay uh, to be made with some modifications you can say okay modifications means uh, allowance okay i can write it for you allowances okay as well okay now allowances we we'll learn during the pattern class okay so stick to the video till the end we'll have a clear concept about the basic terms or the casting terms of metal casting okay now let us come to the parting line look parting line Parting line, it is already I mentioned that it divides, you know, uh, you can say this is the dividing line, you can also say. The parting line is the dividing line between the two molding flux. This one, this one you can say. Two molding flux. We are calling it as a flux only, okay. So this one is a flux and this one is a flux. Look, um, for now being, this is a theoretical portion. So you will be wondering how it looks like a flux it doesn't look like a flux and what the exact shape of the flux is and what uh, exactly the parting look uh, parting line looks like so i have uh, recorded a i have a got i have got a recorded video of you know metal casting process which we already done in our workshop as well so i will you know um, uh, upload the uh, recorded video of uh, you know the casting process which we earlier recorded during our workshop classes uh, that will help you to learn or you know visualize the actual things which i am discussing right now with you as well okay so just have some patience just learn the definitions of the you know uh, theoretical portions of the metal casting process and the different terms uh, associated with this metal casting process later part you will be able to see the uh, recorded video of uh, live you know casting process where we we'll, you will have a clear idea or concept of different you know terms i am just using right now okay so just stick to the video okay now this parting line as i already mentioned that is a, it is a dividing line between the two you know molding flux okay that makes up the sand mold okay now in split pattern you don't know what is split pattern so i i will be taking a different class on pattern as well there we will learn different patterns and different applications as well okay for now we just think of a split pattern this split pattern nothing but pattern in uh, say uh, we are having a pattern in two portions you can say okay so two portions okay. that will be symmetrical also okay so two portions we are making a pattern in a suit two portions as well okay so that is the uh, that is your you know uh, split pattern okay so uh, in split pattern it is also this parting line is also the dividing line between the two halves of the pattern as well okay this one okay this one so this is a split part okay so making round objects we are using the split pattern as well okay or for basic i can say for making round object but this split pattern you know i can write it for you the split pattern is very very much helpful for making intricate shape patterns as well okay so split pattern is a very important thing in casting round products as well as very intricate and complex products okay now the next one is your um, this is a simple one this is a bottom board we are using generally a wooden board the bottom board is nothing but a, you know it is a board of made made generally of wood okay which is used at the start of the mold making when we are you know when we are using this making this you know this you can say this molding box we are having this this one 
uh, a wooden board this is nothing but a wooden board, simple board wooden board uh, where we are um, placing before the floor and above it we are making the mold and we are uh, uh, putting the sand as well in different section that is a coop and rack there uh, initially they, that will be the you know we are placing the coop and drag in a single way say this is a coop and this is a drag and this is your you know wooden board we are just putting the sand over here coop and drag we are ramming it then we are putting the coop above the you know drag this is the final portion okay previously it was made in to single you know single way or single part even so so before uh, coming to the you know uh, attaching the coop with the track we have we'll have a wooden board or simply a bottom board you, we are going to use it and uh, on which we are placing the coop and drag in a separate way and we are putting the sand as well and we are ramming it then we are just joining the coop with the track as well okay so this is the uh, this bottom uh, this bottom board is normally you can say made up of wood and which is used at the start of the mold making you can say the pattern is first kept on the bottom board also we are having the pattern as well okay so we are having the pattern as well so uh, sand is sprinkled over it you can say the sand is sprinkled like this okay sand is sprinkled over it. okay uh, and the ramming is done on the drag as well okay so this is the bottom board you can say okay now facing sand this is very important you know facing sand now what is facing sand this uh, you know facing sand is uh, somewhat a small amount of carbonaceous you know uh, material sprinkled on the inner surface of the molding cavity okay so you can write a uh, uh, carbonaceous material you can write carbonaceous so it is carbonaceous material which is to be sprinkled you know which is to be sprinkled on the inner surface of the molding cavity okay to give you know the use is very important you know this use of facing sand you are going to have this mcq question what is the purpose of facing sand different competitive uh, examinations and uh, you know, semester examinations as well so the use of facing sand is very important so you must take a note somewhere the uh, advantage or uh, you know the use of facing sand is to give better surface finish you know better surface finish to castings okay so now next important term is you know in the um, molding sand this is very important you know as because this is the main part of casting as you can see the molding sand it is uh, you know freshly prepared refractory material as you earlier know that sand is one of the most uh, useful or you know popular uh, refractory material used during metal casting process okay so molding sand is uh, the freshly prepared you can write it as a freshly prepared so freshly prepared refractory material as well you can see refractory you already know which can withstand high temperature that is the refractory okay so refractory material used for making mold cavity this mold cavity okay now it is a mixture this is very important you know we must take a note what is the composition of molding sand we will discuss in uh, details about the molding sand for now on just uh, uh, just know the principal you know um, uh, ingredients of the molding sand as well now the principal ingredients of the molding sands includes a mixture of uh, you can write a mixture of silica clay and moisture in appropriate proportions as well okay we just can simply mix this you have to mix this in certain appropriate proportions to get the desired results and it surrounds the pattern you cannot see pattern over here as because it is you know in the um, uh, cover of sand okay so 
this molding sand covers the pattern while making the mold okay so this is very important and you must take a note of molding sand the principal you know they are going to ask in different you know competitive exams as well the principal mixtures or ingredients of molding sand are silica clay and moisture okay now the next one is your baking sand b s c k i n g baking sand so this is also one of the important term in relating to the metal casting as well now the baking sand constitutes most of the refractory material found in the mold as well okay this is made up of used and burnt you know sand so you can write it as made up of used and burnt sand okay this is baking sand okay and this baking sand provides strength to the molding sand as well okay now next we'll have a Mm, another term very important term relating to the casting process as well so that will be your you know that is core you already heard the name of core while i was discussing about the history of uh, casting process and that was you know during uh, 3500 bc in mesopotamia the first you know concept of casting arrived and they were that at that time only they were using the core they already have the concept of core at that time so you think a uh, long back they were already having the concept of core look uh, for casting uh, simple we are uh, doing up we are taking a pattern and we are filling with the uh, sand and then we are pouring the you know molten metal and we are just getting the final solid product okay now say we have to make a round product so we have to make a round product okay so cylindrical type of product so and this should be hollow one you know hollow that means this is a void in between this, there is a void that is not solid one okay so we have to make a hollow cylinder or you can say we have to cast a hollow cylinder how we can make here comes the concept of core core is itself is a solid one say solid one okay so in between you know in between when we are going to cast when we are going to cast we are going to you know putting a solid object say this is a solid object okay this is a solid object. and this solid object is used as a you know uh, core in the molding cavity okay this will be placed you know with the help of that i will discuss later on or dowel pins or the supports you know inside the molding block we'll discuss in the different types of core as well in the later portion for now on just you know that for making hollow object we have to use a solid object that is known as core as well okay now the next one i have for you is the pouring basin okay now the pouring basin you can see um, i can see it for you uh, over here you can see uh, the picture is not clear but i can say uh, just think of this this one you know this is the i can write it for you as the pouring basin this is simply nothing but where you are going to put the molten metal so next part i can write it for you the more important thing is the you know pouring basin so in this pouring basin you are going to pour the molten metal out of this you know ladle okay so this is the pouring basin as well you can say this portion okay this is the pouring basin now next uh, our uh, term is the sprue now the sprue so the sprue is you know uh, for pouring basin i must add one more thing it is a funnel shaped you can uh, write it somewhere it is funnel uh, shaped cavity you can write cavity and at the top of the mold you can write top of mold okay top of mold and 
where the multimetal is poured you can write for your note okay so this is the pouring machine now coming to sprue it is the passage okay look the direction i have given the direction so sprue is the passage through which the molten metal you know after pouring in the pouring basin the molten metal goes in this way okay this one this so after pouring the molten metal from the ladle in the pouring basin it travels through the sprue so sprue you can say the passage through which the molten metal from the pouring basin reaches the mold cavity this is the mold cavity okay in uh, now one more thing i must add for your you know mcq questions this sprue this is very important which i am going to tell you uh, it also controls you know controls the uh, you can write flow of metal flow of metal uh, into the mold as well into the mold so you must take a note of the use of this you know this is a special one uh, into the mold okay now the sprue also controls the flow of metal into the mold as well so this is very important for your competitive examinations okay they are going to ask you mcqs on the uh, function of the sprue as well okay now now first let me define the different you know uh, uh, pictures shown over here the different terms uh, coming out of this you know picture and this one is your you know this is the riser first first let me explain this uh, picture then i will move on to the some remaining casting terms as well okay so this is the this is the cope you already know this is a cope i have already written over here this is a drag also you can say now this is a pouring basin you already know and this is the you know uh, i can write it for you you can see this one this passage is known as a sprue and parting line you already know this one is the parting line okay now um, riser riser i have given and this look this are the small op openings i have marked it with the black color so you can write it as a you know uh, this one also this all small openings are known as vent we have to make vent for the easy passage of the you know um, uh, vapor as because we are pouring a high temperature material so there might be uh, you know some vapors so we have to uh, make a passage for the uh, you know clearance of the vapors as well now these are the known as the vents and now coming to the runner look uh, this i have shown over here is you know this is the runner and here in a solid you know in a solid there is a solid one object this is known as core okay now this is the runner where the molten metal flows uh, to the gate so i can write it as runner okay and this is also here is a cavity as well this is known as the mold cavity as well okay so this is a basic basic you know my basic uh, the molding um, structure of the molding and casting as well uh, i will also help you with a different you know picture you know 2d picture this is, i uh, try to draw a 3d picture for better understanding uh, so it looks somewhat clumsy but i will make uh, another 2d picture for your clear understanding of the different terms relating to the metal casting as well for now mind you just know this is the runner and um, core as well and the parting line now let us move to the remaining of the some of the you know uh, casting uh, terms um, and that will be you know i have already mentioned the sprue sprue is the passage through which the molten metal flows now coming to the next term one important term is you know is a uh, runner what is runner runner is very important thing in casting metal casting what is runner runner is the passageway similarly as sprue as well but the direction you can see this is the runner this is the sprue sprue the direction will be somewhat in the down, downwards so while we are pouring the molten metal in the you know uh, pouring machine 
uh, from the pouring machine the molten metal flows through the uh, this passage which is which is known as sprue in downward direction okay after filling up the you know uh, uh, after coming through the runner as well as gates uh, coming to the molding cavity filling up the you know uh, mold cavity then it rises up through this runner so the direction is toward uh, you know upward side okay so this is the downward side direction this is the upward side so molten metal enters through this sprue and comes out through this riser as well okay? so runner runner you can say this is the passageway this is the runner so runner is the passageway in the parting line this is the parting line as well in the parting line through which the molten metal is regulated you can write it very important for your mcqs it is regulated before they reach the mold cavity okay so this is the runner now next one so next one says is the uh, gate is very important they are asking the design of gates different types of gates top bottom side so segmented gate as well so gate is this is not the gate examination but this is as important as gate, gate examinations as well okay so gate is very important in metal casting gate is the actual entry point you can say you can write it as well make some note somewhere so gate is uh, actual entry point through which molten metal enters the mold cavity okay now coming to the next one we are having the chaplet you can say the chaplet so this chaplet and chill they are points you know they are very important for your mcqs okay when you are going to you know learn mcqs in uh, mechanical engineering through different books like rk jain okay and khurmi gupta as well so you'll find this chaplet and chills are very uh, repeating words they are using in mcqs in production engineering as well okay so this chaplet and twins you can say these are the twins okay these are the brothers so chaplets but the functions are different you can so but you must remember this chaplet and chills they are very important for your competitive examinations mcqs okay so chaplets are made uh, to support you can write it as to support cores core you already know that is to there is a solid object which is used to make hollow object during casting okay so this chaplet now the chaplet comes to support cores okay and these chaplets are used to support cores inside the mold cavity to take care of its own weight and to overcome the metallostatic forces as well so this is the chaplet which supports core now the chills chills are you know metallic objects these are the metallic objects and um, which are placed in a mold to increase the cooling rate it helps in cooling rate cooling rate and uh, you know to provide uniform or desired cooling rate okay so directional solidification is it is also used for you know directional solidification i can write it this is very important you, you must take a note so it is also used for directional solidification as well okay so it helps in increasing the cooling rate okay so these two very important terms i have discussed with you now coming to the riser the last one is the riser you know riser i already um, described you i shown in here this is the riser one so riser you can write this is also very important the riser it is the reservoir you can also say it is a reservoir okay these are going to you know compensate the sinkage allowance okay we will discuss this sinkage allowance in the later part for now on you just know that the riser is the reservoir of molten metal providing the casting so that the hot metal can flow back this one flow back into the mold cavity you can say okay you can say this can also flow back into the mold cavity where there is a reduction in volume of metal due to you know solidification okay so this helps this has got two functions mainly okay first you will know whether the molten metal you are pouring in the mold cavity whether it is got filled in the mold cavity or not as because when it is coming out of the riser you have a idea that it, uh, the amount you are uh, you know spending to fill up the mold cavity is already filled up and the second function the riser riser you can say as a indicator also 
so you can say the riser as an indicator of whether the molten metal is already filled up in the mold cavity or not so that first function you can say it is a acting as an indicator okay the next function it helps in compensation during solidification as well how the molten metal it got reserved in itself in the riser so during solidification if somehow uh, there is a uh, you know scarcity or uh, need of uh, again molten metal so further the molten metal comes from the riser and it get filled up in the um, mold cavity to uh, provide materials or volume of metal during solidification as well okay